Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, members, attendees of the Diocese of Northern Indiana Episcopal Convention. It is a wonderful pleasure and an honor to address you on this occasion. I want to express my gratitude to Bishop Sparks, to John Schramm, and Tim uh, Skimina, and all of those of your diocese who have been to Honduras, who has shared God's word with us, and who have been in companionship with our brothers and sisters of San Jose de la Montaña. On this occasion, it is my pleasure to express my gratitude to the Diocese of Northern Indiana for your support and walking the walk and talking the talk with us during the early stage of COVID-19. I, as I share with you today, I want to let you know that we are, we are so grateful because through your donation and your contributions, uh, we were able to reach over 2,500 uh, people, members of the Episcopal Church, and non-members of the Episcopal Church. We fed them through the early stages of COVID-19, both physically and spiritually. However, last week, Sunday, we proceeded with the reopening of our churches, following the footsteps or the design of the diocesan protocol. We are reopening our churches with morning or evening prayer only. Until the second Sunday in February, when the clergy will be able to celebrate the Eucharist and distribution of the Eucharist in one kind. Only the body of Christ, only the bread would be distributed in our congregations. I'm, I'm also happy to share with you the fact that uh, so far we have had no casualties within the clergy. All the clergy is accounted for and our congregations are, are healthy. We have lost uh, a few members in, the, in a few of our deaneries. The Diocese of Honduras is, the, is subdivided into two regions and 11 deaneries. We have 130 congregations attended to by, by 46 priests and deacons, including the bishop. Happily, though, I'm happily to share. I'm very enthusiastic of the fact that uh, early September we started our theological program with 54 students in the program. This is, this is enthusiastic. It's happy. And I'm happy to share this with you today as I report to you this morning. However, Honduras has been facing high levels of poverty and inequality. 48.3% of the people in this country live in poverty. This is an update that I received uh, from the official poverty line. And the percentage of people living in poverty in, rural, in the rural areas is 60.1%. is higher than the urban areas, which is 38.4%. Inequality uh, in 2017 was among the highest in the region and the world and had also resulted in one of the smallest middle class in Latin America. In addition, Honduras uh, struggles currently with a high level of violence and over 41 uh, homicide in 100 inhabitants. Moreover, Honduras is vastly exposed to natural adverse events and climate change, especially heavy rainfall and drought, 
that regularly occur and disproportionately affects the poor. Moderate and volatile economic growth and high inequality have created the conditions for the emergence of two mutually reinforcing cycles in the country. One, a high crime low growth cycle, and two, an immigration uh, remittance flow low growth cycle. These continue to affect the country's economy, growth potentials, and the economic opportunities available for Honduras. These dynamics intervene to act as push factors for migration. The primary trigger of migration for many people in Honduras continue to be uh, better economic opportunity, crime and violence, and family uh, reintegration. An agreement with the International Monetary Fund can help to strengthen the country's microeconomic framework and support economic and institutional reforms on key issues, such as uh, improving the sustainability of the electrical se sector, as well as governance and, and business climate, which can contribute to further developing a framework for inclusive growth in Honduras. COVID-19 has changed the landscape of this country. No one, and I, I would vouch to say that not even in Northern Indiana, not even in South Africa or India or the Philippines, no one or the U.S. or the first world countries were prepared to deal with COVID. It has affected the way we do our business. It has affected the way we do church. And for Honduras, COVID will be with us for a long time. I listened to the I listened last week or week before to a scientist and people who are pretty much very well aware of COVID, that COVID would be with us until 20, 2022 or 2021 because third world countries will not have the financial uh, means to purchase the vaccine whenever it's ready. So the first world countries will have that opportunity before us. We will continue to struggle and we have to learn to live with COVID. So I'm asking of you today to continue to pray for us. Keep us in your prayers as we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Northern Indiana. I pray regularly at my early morning devotion with the staff at the diocese office for our companion diocese, for Northern Indiana, for Bishop Sparks, and for the blessing that has bestowed upon us to be in relationship with you. Keep us in your prayers. And I have one uh, further request. As I told you and shared with you earlier, it's very stressing and difficult. Our schools, the enrollment of our schools are down 50%. And that's the private schools. The children out in the rural areas will have very little access to internet and to computers. I'm trying to develop a computer project a laptop project in which I'm asking for donated laptops or donated tablets, but tablets that are seventh generation and above. If you want to donate a tablet, don't give us a second generation tablet because it won't be good to us. We cannot upload Zoom, we cannot upload Teams, and there are many things that we, can't, we cannot do with a second generation tablet. Please help us. We need your assistance. We need your companionship. And may God continue to richly bless you in the Diocese of Northern Indiana. Continue blessing Bishop Spark and his ministry. Thank you for the opportunity you have given us to walk together with you in a companionship. 
May God bless you and may God keep you now and forever. Amen.